I've done a most detailed breakdown on the Pillar of Autumn. I actually re-released it recently on my own channel in order to give you a little refresher to the particulars of the Pillar of Autumn. Truth be told, it was actually a video I created in collaboration with Eckhart's Ladder, which pretty much kicked this channel off in the first place. Before that video went live, I had been uploading videos for around a year and had gained a small but loyal following of 767 subscribers. The day that video went live on Eckhart's channel, and I put his video live on my channel, quite literally overnight I hit 16,000 subscribers, and it has continued to grow ever since, which is absolutely awesome and I literally can't thank Eckhart and all of you enough for joining me on this greatest of journeys. The reason I bring this up is due to the video's subject in question. It was a video done on the Pillar of Autumn. Since then, I have also released a video about the law scale problem, basically where smaller craft and ships don't fit inside of the docking bays of larger ships. Again, in that video I referenced the Pillar of Autumn not being able to fit the longsword in its hangar bay due to its massive size discrepancy, and it, it's pretty much academic now that there are other inconsistencies that throw the scale off completely. In my scale video, I come to the ultimate conclusion that upscaling UNSC ships by a factor of 2.65 would render all of these scale issues moot. Well, not, not all of them. And now we find ourselves at the subject of this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inscation 00. This is Lauren Theory, and today we are reworking the Pillar of Autumn completely to not only fit the scaling issues, but also reworking the final Warthog run to actually work within the confines of the ship. A tall order, I know, but stick with me. While we are on the subject, if this video actually succeeds in rescaling and reworking the Pillar of Autumn to work within the context of the lore and fit what needs to be fitted, then the best way to test this idea is to make it and play it, but I'll get to that in a bit. So with nothing more to do, let's take a look. So the Autumn measures 1.17 kilometers in length. If you scale this against the Longsword's wingspan, you get this. The Longsword rests within one of the Autumn's eight hangar bays. This is what the hangar bay looks like. If we maintain the same scale ratio, you arrive at this. Although at face value it seems like it fits, remember that I said that the Autumn has eight of these. This is how they should be laid out, but if we laid them out like this, one of two things happen as a consequence. Either the longsword gets scaled down to around a factor of 2.65, or the autumn has to be scaled up. If we scaled the longsword down, Chief wouldn't be able to fit inside of it to fly out of the autumn at the end of Halo CE, so the autumn has to be scaled up. A step further from this still, it's been long understood that the final Warthog run is significantly longer than the autumn is. A quick search on Google reveals a page from halo.bungie.org called the Pillar of Autumn Conundrum. Here you can see a great breakdown of how the scale issue and gameplay translate against each other. The images you see here are taken from this page, and show the entire Warthog run from start to finish superimposed over a model of the Autumn. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what is wrong here now, does it? But also, just the normal levels of the game also occasionally protrude from the Autumn's hull, but I'll reference that at a later date. Switch over to gameplay, and when Chief climbs off of the elevator and hops into a Warthog, Cortana updates his HUD with a waypoint marker indicating 2 kilometers. Well, that's already further away than the Autumn is long. Funny thing is, that's only to the bridge where Fohammer was supposed to pick him up. Oh, and don't get me started on that bridge. An entire front and back end of a warship appears to be held together by a single roadway. Seems legit. From this bridge to the hangar bay, we get another waypoint marker showing one kilometer. So in total, that's three kilometers of Warthog Run within a ship that it's only 1.17 kilometers in length. And when you do finally arrive at the end, the hangar bay you're in and the longsword you fly shouldn't even be able to fit inside of the ship alongside the other hangar bays unless you scale the autumn up or the longsword down and the hangar bays down. So with all of that said, time to fix this. So right away, the autumn is being scaled up. Boom, now she's 3,100 meters in length. Those eight hangar bays now fit within the autumn and the longsword doesn't have to change size. That's good. 
but just because she's three kilometers in length doesn't mean that that's the end of it. The warthog run, while also three kilometers in length, doesn't start at the stem and go all the way to the stern. So we now have to rework the warthog run to be more conclusive with the form and function of the autumn, while also not getting in the way of other known areas of the ship. So how do we do that? Well, let's just focus on the warthog run to start with. So we know it starts off of a freight elevator that appears to traverse a large portion of the ship's height. This is good. That means the warthogs stored near the top of this elevator are able to be ferried to other areas within the ship with relative ease. But we board the elevator just off of the main engine room. So where is the engine room now located in this new upscaled autumn? Right here. Nestled nicely along the centre line of the ship, seated directly between the ship's two main engines, allowing the reactor's immense energy to be used for thrust. Seems logical. And where do we finish up? Calculating alternate escape route. Ship's inventory shows one longboard fighter is still docked in Launch Bay 7. If we move now, we can make it. Launch Bay 7. I'm going to assume that the bays are numbered sequentially port to starboard. This means in theory, since the longsword exits the ship on the starboard side one launch bay back from the frontmost bay, the launch bays are likely numbered like this. With launch bay 7 being in the same location as we see in game, so we're not breaking anything there, that's another good development. Now we know where our start point is, and our end point is, and the ship's scale is more accurate, so we can begin to plot in where the Warthog run goes. Now, admittedly, yes, the two points are logistically on the same level and are pretty much a straight shot between the two, but that would be a boring as hell Warthog run and wouldn't be quite what we got in game anyway. And you've got to bear in mind that Cortana was redirecting Chief to an outside bridge, the bloody stupid bridge. I mean, who the hell would have a single roadway connecting the front and rear sections of an entire ship? Who the f for that <clears throat> anyway moving on so bearing in mind I'm trying to preserve the length and difficulty of the run as best as possible so I'm not detracting from gameplay I'm just trying to rework it so it works better based on the true scale ratios so let's assume that the freight elevator is still where we kick things off boom there is the freight elevator it takes us all the way to the top dorsal structure of the ship now let's plot in key areas between the start and the end. In my eyes, the next outwardly recognisable portion of the Warthog run is the bridge where Echo 419 is supposed to pick us up. It is two kilometres away from the initial start point and is our initial destination. So where does this happen? It's a tiny bridge holding what appears to be the front and the back of the ship together. It's ridiculous, but it still has its place within this new rework, and that place is right here. This small void in the outer hull of the ship could be a viable option. This little nook is actually a small area created as a consequence of the autumn's internal structure and its major hull sections. This area denotes the location of where two major hull sections meet, and due to the autumn's honeycomb structure, the larger hull section would have to accommodate additional structure while the smaller hull section would be lacking. To avoid the two honeycombs interfering with each other, this void is intentionally built as a buffer to avoid structural issues. In a straight line it is 1.5 kilometers from the freight elevator but of course the warthog run between these two points does curve and wind a lot likely making up for the additional 500 meters. The void itself is as little as 24 meters across but as wide as 48 meters depending on where you position the bridge. Well the pelican's width at the wingtips is 23 meters making it much too tight at the low end so if we cut the bridge across a little higher up towards the 48 meter point we have sufficiently wide enough bridge for a pelican to fly to with a rather cavernous 50 meter drop below it. The funny thing is the bridge in game is approximately 50 meters in length so shaving off 2 meters for our new reworked bridge doesn't make a huge amount of difference and still allows for Echo 419 to fly in, get attacked and go down, while still also being a bridge between sections and still being two kilometers from the start point. That isn't a bad compromise in my books. Moving on. The next significant area is the gap in the roadway. During the research and creation of this script for this video, I did play them more and looked at loads of game footage from YouTube to ascertain the function of this area. It doesn't come across in the original game, however, in the anniversary edition, a very thorough artist went to the greatest efforts of putting in new geometry and adding new detail to this area 
to the point where it is now clear this area is actually a logistics area with what appear to be heavy lift platforms and crane-like devices spanning the area. You can see what appear to be large trackways spanning the gap. You can see a platform as seen here. These appear to move backwards and forwards along a trackway across the ceiling and these deliver materials and goods to various levels and access ways this area seems to feed into. If you look at the Pillar of Autumn in Warfleet, you'll notice towards the front area of the ship is the main structural hardpoints and docking doors into the ship, and right behind these are large warehouse-like storage areas. It seems logical to me that if you have a warehouse area here for the initial loading of stock and materials for the ship, from food to ammo, personal belongings, weapons, vehicles, etc., it would be logical to have a freighting area where these goods can be distributed to the various areas of the ship where they are needed. That seems to be exactly what this area is. And that leads me to believe that this gap in the road is actually seated right around here. And then really the only other place of significance is the final area being the launch bay. Okay, that's the major areas. Now let's fill in the gaps. Perfect. Well, not perfect perfect. This simply allows the Warthog run to be in situ within the confines of the more accurately proportioned hull and still be approximately the same length and hopefully just as enjoyable. I did take great efforts to ensure the approximate locations of key places through the run maintain a similar distance from each other. So let's take a quick walk through this. So we start off at the elevator and you immediately go into the Warthog holding area up the very steep ramp which takes you practically directly across the spine of the ship and you find yourself in the first large open area. That hasn't changed at all. From here however you move on through an S-bend curve and you find yourself in the second large and significant area. Uh, which is immediately abutted again by the third largest area. From here you do basically a 180 turn, drop down a ramp, do one of those large curved kind of trackways where you can have that kind of little shortcut in between, drop down yet another ramp, do another 180 turn and you're into the fourth large area. After navigating your way through here you go up a ramp and you find yourself at the Pelican 419 bridge. At least the location of this bridge seems logical given the shape and size of the exterior hull but I digress. Anyway, you can either decide to wait here for Pelican 419 to fly through, get attacked and then eventually crash, or as with most of us I'm sure, we just blast on through this part, in which case you're greeted with a very similar track to what's always been there, which includes a small ramp down, a long corridor followed by yet another ramp down. Then you are immediately greeted with a 180 degree turn followed by yet another ramp down. You go through one of the large winding curves. This one is the one where you can find the grunt that says about the food nipple. If you've never found him, it's certainly worth a try. Just go down that little alleyway, hop out of the Warhog, and walk to the end of the other corridor that junctions into that one. From here, you go through yet another 180 degree turn, followed by another ramp down. You go through another one of these large winding areas. You are then greeted by yet another ramp down, followed by another 180 degree turn followed by yet another ramp down, followed by an S-bend to your left, followed by another ramp down, and then we're on our way to the Leap of Faith room. After performing the heart-stopping jump to that small little area in between, and then hopping out of the other junction way, you then find another slight slope downwards, and then a straight run to the hangar bay. Now, with this part, we had to rework it. Obviously, there are now eight hangar bays, and they basically back onto one another, so it seemed logical in my eyes to put a single corridor, or roadway if you will, that feeds into the back of each of the hangar bays, as so. And this just seems to give a little bit more grandeur to the internal workings of the Pillar of Autumn and allows a much larger open area as well as showing some of the damage and chaos that could be going on within the Pillar of Autumn at this time. From here the roadway will be blocked and it's a simple left hand turn straight into Hangar Bay 7, you're immediately blocked by the large containers and then it's a straight run to the Longsword, just as it's always been. And that, in a nutshell, pretty much does it for now. The real test as to the enjoyment factor and suitability of this run would be to actually build it, which is exactly what I intend to do, or rather I intend for you to do. I'm not much of a forger myself, I've given it a little go here and there but never made anything of any real significance and Let's be honest, there are some forge creations by the community out there that are absolutely phenomenal. But I know plenty of people who are pretty talented in forge, and I'm sure there are many of you out there who are also equally as talented. So I have set out the challenge of making this Warthog run in forge. It doesn't matter what game, as long as it's as accurate to the schematic I've laid out here as possible. Feel free to jump into the Discord server and we can discuss it there in detail. I've actually created a separate channel for it. 
Uh, that's a growing mountain of channels in my Discord server now. Anyway, I did, after all, cut and crop the original run as provided by Halo.Bungie.org, and there were no leftover pieces, so in theory that means it should pretty much be as it was in originally, which is pretty epic. So the challenge is out there, and you can expect a video in the near future featuring a completed Warthog run, and hell if I get a lot of submissions I may reveal quite a few of the Warthog runs. So if you feel so inclined, give it a go yourself, and get hold of me on Twitter or on Discord, and we'll take a look at it on this channel. So in the meantime, there's more content coming from me, hopefully there's more content coming from you, and I just have to say... Thanks for watching. Sticky comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, the Holders of the Mantle, Alvin, Andre, Austin, Black Biscuit, Dreaming, J Rabbit, Kaiser, Reclaimer216, Samantha, Spartan A498, Squire Young, Silux, The Death Mantle, The Revanche, Thin Ice, my Reclaimers, Bastion, Christopher, Critical, Daniel, David, Deep Cover, Dylan, Flaming Halo, Guppy, Harbinger, Ice Lord Cryo, Josh, Verbal Statue, Kenneth, Mickey, Mulshar, Nightrise, Spesigo, Starlight, Zack and Zack, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys, seriously, you guys are awesome. And this, all of this wouldn't be possible without you. Just having you guys aboard is, is phenomenal. I've seen a massive spike in, in people jumping aboard. Um, it's very, very humbling. Uh, if you like Halo Lord Discuss to Insane Lazard Detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and be sure to jump in if you want to get involved with perhaps making a Forge version and getting it featured on the channel. It would be great. And if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon, joining the domain and the list of beautiful human beings who exist there that I've just listed, as well as tons more and supporting the channel over there, or indeed becoming a channel member by hitting that join button. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.